Hello and welcome to another Artist Opus video. We're going to be taking a naked flesh hound. He's just had his base done and some scraping and prepping on him and turning it into a finished flesh hound as fast as possible. And the reason we're doing this is I am working out how to get an entire army to a high level in just 24 hours. So a test model is a really important part of that. We're going to be tying in some color theory. Now a load of you in multiple videos since we began the channel have asked for some insight into how I pick colors, how I use color theory. Stick around to the end and I'll be going more in depth on this. But for now, to kind of give you a TLDR version, a really compact version of it, my model is going to be red orange. So I, I've got a manipulatable color wheel here. They are amazing. You can just spin things around and work it all out. I've got a red orange model. So I'm going to be going for a tetrad. So blue, violet, and yellow green are going to feature in the paint job and hopefully as i'm following the principles of the science of color art of color whichever way you want to see it it should work out really nicely uh, you don't have to follow a color wheel or color theory to get a nice looking paint job but it certainly can help right let's jump into the paint let's go so i'm going to be doing a lot of pre-shading on this model um, I will be using the airbrush for quite a lot of that and it's all going to be very, very slapdash work. So hopefully things work out okay. The purpose of pre-shading is to put down some light colors or dark colors and the idea is to have them show through in the next stage of your painting. So what I'm going to be doing here is putting down a white and then my following stages will be brighter that go over the top of it. Okay, so I wanted to cover this bit specifically. I am doing a light all over dry brush. I've chosen to use ivory. And the reason I've chosen to use um, something that isn't white is I want the option to have a brighter version than this. I'm doing it quite heavily in terms of the amount that's on the brush. And that's because we've got a few layers to go over this. So I don't mind it being pretty hefty. That's probably a little bit too heavy. Now I've worked off the excess, it's working much better. There we go, that's exactly what we're going for. So ignore the first bit. This is what we want, that's picking out muscles really efficiently and just volumes in general. So test this elsewhere first. I'll test it on the mohawk spine feature, whatever you call it. And then at that point when I'm happy with it there, I take it all over the rest of the model. Okay, so this is our all over dry brush and then I will do a little bit of white. Again, test it somewhere where there's low risk and then take it to the rest of the model. Really need to pick out those face features. So this is our pre-shading before we go on with our filter steps. And stop. So why are we stopping here 10 minutes into the tutorial and why does it look like I've only done one stage when in fact I've done about five stages of work. Uh, the reason for that is this bad boy. Now this is a amazing contrast paint. Flesh Terror is red. It's a gorgeous rich bloody sanguine color and it is super strong. So unfortunately here there is a lot of variation in the contrast range. That's not a bad thing or a good thing in this circumstance. It just is kind of the properties of the paints vary quite a lot. And I've put down one expecting it to be more transparent than it is. And basically I have just completely obliterated all of my work that's come previously. It happens, it is exactly why we are doing a test model. I'd much rather this happened on one thing than, than on like uh, if I was painting five flesh hounds at once or something like that, but it's a learning point. You'll notice uh, when I kind of do take two on this uh, about 10, 15 minutes in, after the 10 minutes where I've screwed it up and just deleted all my previous work, I'm gonna use glaze medium, I'm gonna use more water, and I'm gonna kind of pad out the paint a lot more to get around the fact that it is far closer to an ink, a really potent, strong ink that just has flat coverage than a lot of the other contrasts. If you were to use this and Aethermatic Blue, the light turquoise tealy contrast, they have completely different coverage, completely different properties, and therefore you have to use them in completely different ways. So learning point number one, from my test model is that I need to dilute the flesh terrors a lot more.
I'm gonna basically ignore the first 10 minutes of that because we pretty much deleted all the work we did. Um, we've got here in an hour slash 50 minutes, depending on how you wanna view that. And I don't think it's too bad, a lot of learning along the way. And the main point is that I, I would really like to use something like Flesh Terror's Red, something deep and saturated, but you've got to get the mix right to ensure that it doesn't obscure all of your work so far on the model. So what I'm going to do is spend another 10 minutes, five minutes kind of polishing this. I'm going to uh, make a brighter source in the middle of these glowing lava magic-y sections, give it a black rim, and then put some Tammy Clay Red on it, and we should be pretty much done. All right, so next to a considerably more messy desk than I started with, we have ended up here. In 66 minutes, I completely obscured my first 10 minutes work by using a wash that was too thick, but overall, I reckon that theme is a solid place to be going uh, with my speed paint and army ambitions, at least. Um, I want something efficient. I did quite a lot of experimenting within the hour of painting we had, so probably like if I knuckled down to it and picked a method and also picked my dilutions for my washes and didn't completely screw things up and just delete all of my previous work. That's probably about 30 or 35 minutes worth of work there. So, color wheels. Now, the way that I use a color wheel, and you can use this any way you like, it's such an amazingly useful and flexible tool, is I tend to have one or two maximum colors in mind that I want to use now. That doesn't mean they have to be the predominant main color on the model, most of the time it is, but you could literally start off from the point of, I want bright orange glowing fire all over my army, or something like that. So, let's say you did start off with yellow orange, difficult to do kind of in reverse, uh, you start off with yellow orange, you could end up in a triad, you could end up just going for complementary, that is the most basic, what is literally opposite, um, but it's, it's mostly a matter of just playing around, and bear in mind how you're going to highlight that colour as well, so let's say you are pure orange, but you're going to be highlighting it with yellow, and that opens up some other things opposite or whatever. One of my favourites is to use a split complementary, so in this example, let's say we were going for um, flat orange, you end up with two not quite straight down the line colours, two mixes. So if you're with flat orange, uh, opposite, and then either side of your opposite, and you can do that once more to get to a triad, uh, rather than going blue, you end up with blue green and blue violet. And these work really, really beautifully. Um, there's plenty of other stuff on the other side of this about adding different colours to your mix and where you end up and stuff like that, hue and saturation um, for now. Let's just stick with this side though. So basically it's these shapes. Have one color in mind, two colors in mind, and just work out what fits. So if you really want to involve red and orange, kind of by definition, if you want those two, they're either gonna be part of your complementary or they're gonna be part of a tetrad, a four-sided shape. So whatever shape works out, you can make this fit to your intent. It's really difficult to find one or two colors that can't find a shape somewhere within this wheel and by all means, uh, feel free to go in other directions. Uh, some people don't like particularly colors together, just, just on a personal preference note. Um, one thing that I always bear in mind is certain colors are not colors. So silver, black, uh, I don't count bone unless it's really pushed in one direction, like a very warm or a very cool bone, stuff like that. They will not interrupt anything you're doing because they are color neutral there in the black and white gray sale spectrum. So if you want to get a load of contrast, and uh, bright colors and craziness going on, you can always go right down to black, right up to white or off white or off black, like super deep blue, you know, whatever. And those colors aren't gonna mess with what you're doing. So black, white, bright color, you could just have one color, it's a super solid scheme, can't go wrong with that. Um, that is a really, really good way to go. So you can still get loads of contrast in and introduce other perhaps favorite things, silvers or whatever. Or if you have brought in a gold, but you don't want something well, we, yellowy to be involved, just wash it down a few times with your other colors and that will pull it into the scheme you've got. So it's a massively wide open subject. There's loads of different interpretations and ways to approach it. If you have any specific questions about would you put this with this or I'm about to do a corn army but I want to do it yellow, you know, uh, what would you add? Um, stuff like that then by all means put it there in the comments and I'll be more than happy to kind of answer that. 
One further final thing to bear in mind is if you have one color and you want to work out what color you should be using to shade it or what color you could use to shade it, often the colors at the different points of the color wheel can be used to highlight or shade the color you've got in question. So um, if you've got red, you can highlight it with yellow. Obviously it will take it in a different direction. It will end up being more yellow, but you can shade it with blue too. Um, all of these are kind of really good rules of thumb and from there it's up to you to just experiment and find out your perfect combinations and stuff like that. So thank you very much for watching the video. Please like, comment and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next tutorial.